all of us are manifesting every second. But as an athlete doesn't become an elite athlete by waking up one morning saying, I'm an elite athlete. That happens because of what? Habit formation, repetition, intention. To achieve that, though, you have to recognize that there isn't some magic being out in the universe who says you were worthy and you deserve X, Y, or Z. The universe doesn't care about you one iota because there is nothing to care about. There's nothing there. And what we do know from neuroscience, though, is that we have the ability using our minds through training to maximize our ability to manifest. And what I mean by that is, and what's outlined in the book, are very specific techniques and an explanation as to why they work to give you the tools and resources to do that. But to start at the beginning, one thing which I already mentioned is you have to understand what you've already been manifesting. And when, and I'm sure you've met people who say, I don't understand it. I'm going through my third divorce and say, I married the same person all three times. This is because of the baggage you carry and you have unfortunately not healthy methods of connection or bonding. And so you have to understand the baggage first that you've been carrying and take some time to explore that. And what I mean by that is we've been talking about uh, society, Western society. We have a narrative of success being money, power, position. And if you achieve success, that makes you happy. And nothing could, of course, be further from the truth. Yet we brainwash so many people in that manner that we're only worsening an already overwhelming situation where people don't have purpose, they don't have meaning, which is the core of the happy life, which is meaning that this happiness is deep and sustainable versus a narrative of things that I want to make me look important, which is transient, shallow, and it's a dead end in terms of seeking happiness. When you meant, when you say that there's no external factors that are in control of manifesting, I just, I'm curious, how does that square with the concept of God? And you also mentioned free will in your book as well. So can you just talk a little bit about that prayer, God, free will, or, and, and how all that kind of relates to this concept of manifesting? If you look at the evolution of our species, we used to live in tribes. And typically these tribes were up to about 150 because after that, it's very hard to keep track of an individual. In the tribal setting though, the tribe itself would put constraints on your behavior because this is, they were all around you, they were judging you. And accordingly, you would act appropriate to the benefit of the society. Once you got over that number, and that number, I think it's called Dumbarton's number, I could be wrong, or Dunbar's number, could it keep track of people? And so some people would argue that there was another contributing factor to the following. We're the only species that has a finite understand or an understanding of our finite existence, meaning that we know we're going to die. This creates for many people an existential crisis because they're always concerned about dying. Two, once you get over that 150 number, you can't keep track of people. So what would be better than to create a narrative of an omniscient being who sees every action you do and judges that action? So many people would argue that the source of religion actually is to help society function better by creating a moral ethical framework. And if you don't fall within that, then you are punished by this omniscient being that sees everything you do. And it's interesting. If you look at every society, there's a woman who won the Ted prize and she looked at the basis of every religious practice. And she got together with nine priests, gurus, whatever you want to call them. And the fundamental agreement was, and I think science backs this, is that compassion is the fundamental basis of every religion, because that's what's allowed us to survive as a species, as well as the golden rule. If you look at essentially every culture, there is some definition of an omniscient being, 
and that if you practice X, Y, or Z, or you're a good person, you're going to be rewarded by everlasting life. And uh, you can even pull it into the Buddhist narrative or the Hindu narrative, and it's associated with quote unquote karma. You're being punished or rewarded based on your past lives. So these types of narratives were a mechanism to control people's behavior, as well as to benefit overlords or priest class, because once society evolved, you also got the creation of these individuals, because it went from an agrarian society or small groups of people to much larger groups of people. And this is where the greed of man has ever evolved. Thank you so much for watching. Just FYI, we post a new video almost every day, so make sure you comment and subscribe below so you don't miss out on anything. And if you enjoyed this video, I think you're really gonna love this one as well. And if you ever wanna see a playlist of all of my podcasts or all of the plot twists or any other category of videos, you can find links to those in the description below.